Hi, everyone. Welcome to this breaking news edition of Crime Time. We're going to be talking about the indictment of former undersheriff Paul Tanaka. as well as William Tom Carey, who was a former captain of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Both have been indicted um, for orchestrating a plot to obstruct a federal investigation into the use of excessive force and corruption in the L.A. County jails. And that just happened today. Sheriff Tanaka, or former Sheriff Tanaka, was taken in. He also ran, if you will remember, in the sheriff's race for L.A. County after his boss, um, Sheriff Baca, resigned amid allegations and scandal involving this same um, incident of alleged corruption. And the question was, during the grand jury hearings, whether or not Sheriff Baca was responsible for moving that informant around so that the feds couldn't get to him and trying to obstruct the investigation. And now that uh, Tanaka has been investigated, people are wondering, is former Sheriff Baca next? In order to talk about that question, we've brought in Pasadena Star editor Frank Gerardo. He's actually been covering a lot about sheriff, about corruption in the sheriff's department, and I actually saw this headline from him last night. So I wanted to talk to you about it. Kerry is accused of giving false testimonials um, in the um, trials of the low-hanging fruit or the under, you know, the low uh, officers right. who were involved also in this scam. So basically of, of, of perjury during these trials. And, but he's also charged with the conspiracy, the same as Tanaka, to obstruct this federal investigation. So what do you think? I mean, did you think that this was coming? Did it surprise you? Well, I think everybody that followed this case thought that the other shoe was going to drop. I think people expected that when the other shoe dropped, it would bring Lee Baca in, too. Um, but the federal case that indicts uh, both Tanaka and Kerry sort of like uh, lays it out in gang terms. Uh, Paul Tanaka is the shot caller here, um, allegedly anyway. He's the one that's making the, the decisions to move this uh, federal informant from one jail to another to change his booking number to hide him from federal authorities who are seeking information about all kinds of bad stuff that's going on in the jail. And at this time, there was a lot of bad stuff going on in the jail, and it was escalating. Um, and in large part, I think when you look at these indictments and you look at the cases that have already gone before it, uh, you know, Paul Tanaka played a role in how this got out of hand. And this is the federal government saying, hey, dude, you know what? You're going to have to pay the price now. Paul Tanaka, and, and this is by just about everybody that we've talked to, but particularly Bob, Bob Olmstead, who worked in the Sheriff's Department and actually ran for L.A. Um, County Sheriff, he was on this show, and he talked a lot about how Tanaka called all the shots, but how he also ran the Sheriff's Department somewhat like a gang, and, but and in which he had certain members of the Sheriff's Department who were part of this fraternal kind of order where they all had a special coin in order to belong. But the question now remains is, Tanaka going to turn on Baca? Do you think that Tanaka is going to say, because everybody always said he was the guy calling most of the shots and running the department, but that Baca knew everything that he did. He reported directly to Baca. What do you think? Do you think now that he's in hot water, he's going to turn on Baca and uh, give uh, testimony, give something to the feds so that they can indict Baca, who's who they probably really wanted? Well, it seems like this case is going that route. I mean, if you look at the way it's laid out, first they take out the low guys, now they're at the, you know, what you would consider the mid-level guys. And I imagine that, you know, as you develop more details and more information about it, it's going to lead to, the, you know, the former sheriff, Lee Baca. I want to go back, though, to something you said about the coin and the gang and all that stuff. I moderated a debate of all sheriff's uh, candidates. There were seven of them. And uh, it's, this struck me so deeply was how Tanaka surrounded himself with what appeared to be a group of thugs. And I can't really describe it in any other way. Uh, there were sheriff deputies who appeared at this debate, uh, all wearing, you know, uh, T-shirts with big tattoos, uh, you know, biceps showing and everything like that. And it was clearly done to intimidate people from asking the wrong questions. 
This is at the height of the investigation into the sheriff's department. When he was running for when sheriff. When he was running for sheriff. <laughs> Even though he was being called before a grand jury. Right, yeah. And I mean, it was actually quite stark to see how, like the, the, the sheriff, uh, Jim McDonald, for example, he, came, he was at this debate. He shows up with his family. Right? Like uh, most other, candidates. Like most candidates. You know, Bob Olmsted, I think, was there by himself or maybe with a, his wife. Tanaka shows up with 20 guys, all deputies, all there, meaning serious business. And this, by the way, sort of thing has followed him in his career. Uh, you, you go back to the, the tales of the Linwood Vikings and the tattoo on the ankle uh, of a Viking warrior and um, the federal allegations that followed that that were brought against the department that these guys were racist thugs intent on, um, you know, perpetrating violence in, uh, you know, poor and disadvantaged communities. Now, you know, Tanaka obviously was never rolled up in any of that, and he rose into the sheriff's department ranks all the way to the rank of undersheriff. So, um, you know, was he part of that? Well, I don't think we'll ever know, but it certainly is part of his legacy. The guys that know him best love him. Right, the people that worked for him and worked under him. Well, would, he rewarded them too. Well, he with special would, assignments yeah, it's, and everything. It's, that's, that's exactly what right. He would uh, give them. Bob Olmsted said. Yep, that's exactly what he would do. He would give them special. In fact, the guy that was running, that he put in charge of the jail, was a captain that had no business running a jail, and that's one of the things I think that Olmsted uh, clearly brought to Baca's attention. You know, Olmsted is the whistleblower here, uh, a, a former sheriff's uh, executive who saw abuses in the jail and brought it to the attention of Sheriff Baca and had nothing done by Sheriff, Sheriff Baca. So there's a lot of tentacles and a lot of players in this. Uh, as I said earlier, the federal government really sees Tanaka as being the shot caller, the guy who's making the decisions to um, obstruct justice. And that's what this is about, right? An obstruction of justice. Wow. So, and what do you hear? So, do you think that I mean, maybe Kerry is uh, uh, has less loyalty to Baca. I mean, he was really put into place by Tanaka to you know in a position of power. So, I'm just curious. I mean, there are some. These are heavy charges that were filed. Well, these these are these you know big time federal charges with a lot of time attached That's to them. If, saying, if yeah. you, you know if things go the way the federal government wants them to. Uh, you know, Kerry has a son in the sheriff's department. Tanaka's wife is a is a deputy. Um, so, you know, I think this thing is going to reverberate for a long time in the department and um, change stuff. Now, what is what does Kerry bring to this? I don't know. I mean, Ker maybe Kerry's the guy that you use to hold Tanaka accountable. I think we just have to see how it all lays out. Clearly, any if he did in fact commit perjury. Uh, anything that he says is suspect, even if he's rolling over on co-defendants at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, he still could be useful, but I mean, yes, I, I, that's possible. Or maybe they, they drop the perjury charge once he goes over yeah. to, to testify for right. the feds. Now, I just want to switch gears. I'm curious to hear what you think about what's happening in the sheriff's department, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, whether or not you think that the next indictment coming down is going to be against uh, former Sheriff Baca. Do you think Tanaka is going to turn and point the finger upward towards his former boss? Do you think anybody is going to come forward and provide testimony in Tanaka? trial and uh, sort of what how this is all going to play out let us know what you think A former sheriff of Los Angeles County has been found guilty of corruption. Lee Baca was found guilty on all counts in a federal trial that included charges of obstructing an investigation into alleged abuses at county jails. 
The 74-year-old received the guilty verdict after two days of deliberation by the jury. During the trial, Baca maintained his innocence, claiming he was unaware of the actions carried out by others in the department he oversaw. A total of 10 individuals, including his former second-in-command and other deputies, also pleaded guilty or were convicted of crimes related to obstruction.